you to relax for the moment and just breathe with me. Just breathe a mindful breath into this beautiful day outside this morning and feel the presence of love within you. Feel your heart warming your body with a tingling glowing light. <laughs> feel that expanding and growing bigger. And we join together this morning as CSL. We merge our lights as one light. We expand our love as one love. And we focus joy and peace upon ourselves and each other as we speak our purpose statement together from this space of perfect harmony. So in your handout is our purpose statement. Here we go. As an intentional spiritual community, the purpose of CSL is to be a living environment for individuals to realize that we are all unique emanations of God, the love intelligence governing the universe. We embody the truth of our oneness with God and we consciously practice this truth in our everyday life through the exploration of new thought, ageless wisdom, and the energy of unconditioned love. We are dedicated to individual transformation and to being a beneficial presence in the world.
it in my mind and I will listen holy And in this sacred silence, I bring my attention to the divine, the fullness and allness of life. I recognize this allness as spirit, as God, the source of all creation, the one from which all exist. This loving presence is pure love, beauty, wisdom, harmony, and peace. The spirit moves in and around and through me as my life, a unique expression of all that spirit is. For I am one with all life. And as this is true for me, this is true for everyone, each united together, each individualized in the magnificent expression of life. I accept this truth that sets us free as we express gratitude for all the divine blessings in our life. These blessings are abundant and good and ever available as we ask and receive. I declare that we release anything blocking our acceptance of this bounty of life. In gratitude for life, we renew and expand our consciousness with our unity with spirit, knowing that all that spirit is, we are. And in this awareness, we are guided and directed to our highest and greatest to be. I accept our beingness as the activity of the goodness of spirit, as love in the world. The prayer requests and desires of your hearts are bathed in the active presence of spirit. Peace, love, harmony, health, abundance prevail. And the goodness of life is revealing the highest and best for each request. I am so grateful for the volunteers and staff that bless us with their service today, uplifting us to a greater consciousness of spirit in action. I bless each one here as we radiate our divine life, blessing 
one another. So it's with great gratitude and thanksgiving for this awareness of our divinity, for our gratitude, for knowing who we are, for being a part of all and the bounty of our birthright. And I give great thanks for all the blessings that are bestowed upon each and every one of us. So I release this prayer to the law, knowing it is already active, manifesting in magnificence right now, as we join together and declare, and so it is. like to call your attention to the prayer chest just behind you behind the sign there's something that is giving you distress something that um, doesn't feel quite right please leave your worries with us just fill out a prayer request and the a practitioner will do affirmative prayer this week on your behalf and quotes for today Words offer you a verbal picture of what you are holding within your heart. That's from James Sisters. Handle them carefully, for words have more power than atom bombs. That's Pearl Stratton. All right, thank you so much, Lou. Oh, okay, so I'll give you a little personal information. Roy and I are going on a trip. We have to leave. We have to get up like, what, three in the morning or something to be in. But we're, only, we're flying out of junction, so that's good. So, <laughs> so I got a lot on my mind here. So here we go. Our August focus uh, is the spoken word. 
So we've, we've got those focuses from a book called Empowerment, written by John Randolph Price. And in that book, he gives 10 laws or principles for manifestation. And so we took those 10 laws and we spread them out of over a whole year. So we get to study a whole year of empowerment. And we are on the seventh law, which is the spoken word. And so the whole month of August, we're talking about the spoken word. Today, our focus is speak gratitude, okay? And I was thinking about uh, this, the, the gratitude idea when the motorcycle, yeah. did you hear the motorcycle? Yeah. Well, it was like the, the, first, the first week or that we had services outside, that motorcycle went this way, down, down the street this way, those, and it was loud, and I am so grateful. He has not come down this way since then, right? He starts, I mean, obviously he needs to ride his motorcycle. That's awesome, and it's a very loud one. But he, I notice now that he goes the other way, right? I'm grateful. So thank you, Mr. Motorcycle, and I hope you have a wonderful day riding. All right. So gratitude sends the message into the universe that all is well. Actually, not only that all is well, but all is so awesome that my gratitude flows freely out from me in my words, right? And then they come back to me in the form of graciousness from the universe through people and situations and events, which in turn, makes me feel grateful again, right? And again, I send out words of gratitude and on and on and on. And do you see the perfect working of the law of God here? Just in gratitude alone or the law of one. Maybe you don't want to use the word God and that's okay. If, you, if I use a word you don't uh, resonate with, just fill it in yourself. Okay, just change it in your own mind. Oh, God for me means one. God for me means spirit, means a oh, cosmic one, whatever it is, okay? Make it work for you. So to me, this idea of this reciprocal gratitude and graciousness, right, is the meaning of the words in scripture that says, cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. So everything you send out from your thoughts and your words and your actions sends a vibratory beacon upon the universal substance, which in spiritual words are called waters, okay? The living spirit, the infinite and invisible source of our being. Okay, we send that out. And this, this, this invisible source is the creative intelligence of the universe. So we intentionally cast our bread, our own individual power. Our bread is our own individual power of focusing our thoughts and our speaking words because we are made in the image and likeness of that creative power. So we have that same creative power. Okay, we cast our bread upon spirit. And then we allow spirit to reveal to us the spiritual kingdom. Okay, we're not really doing anything. We're allowing a lot. And this revelation of the kingdom comes to us as grace. We don't experience the kingdom of heaven or peace of mind, I like to call it also, as a reward for good behavior but we experience it because we are spiritual beings and we are using spiritual law in our lives. We are aligning with the power of the spirit by mindfully choosing the words and thoughts that we cast upon the creative universal substance that we call God, I call God, okay? And, you know, speaking of, of gratitude here, I remember a time in my a spiritual path when I was asking the question, 
about gratitude, you know, why do I have to be grateful for God? What, you know, does God need me to be grateful? Why do I have to do that? What does this mean? And I thought, you know, a lot of people probably think, how does gratitude fit in here? And what I finally realized after asking the question and getting my own uh, revelation of answers, you know, gratitude is not for God. God doesn't need anything. God is perfect right now, whole and complete. Uh, living in and through and as all right now. The gratitude is for me. The gratitude is for us so that I can become aware of what is already happening, what is already here. The gratitude is so that I send that out, the grace comes back and the kingdom, the kingdom is revealed to me. That spiritual kingdom, that higher order of beings, okay? Um, so in Corinthians, it says, for it, is, for it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. And so I was thinking about that uh, quote, and I found um, this writing by John Piper. And it's called More Than Saying Thank You. So I'd like to share it with you. He says, gratitude flourishes in the sphere of grace. And that is why the play on words in this Corinthians, okay? For it is all for your sake. So that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God, okay? Gratitude is a response to grace, he says. Gratitude is the feeling of happiness you feel towards somebody who has shown you some undeserved kindness, that is, who has been gracious to you. Since gratitude is universally known as a feeling that comes in response to grace, expressions of gratitude have come to be used as expressions of humility and encouragement. When we say thank you to someone, we humble ourselves as a person who has needs, and we exalt them as one who can meet those needs. I am happy to put myself in the position of one who receives grace. I am happy to honor you as one who can meet my need. The reason a simple thank you can say all of this is because of its close association with grace. Since the feeling of gratitude usually rises in our hearts when someone does an undeserved or uncalled for favor, the expression of thanks will at any time communicate humility. I am a mere beneficiary of grace and encouragement. You are my needed and helpful benefactor. Now, with this insight into the meaning of gratitude and its relation to grace, we can understand our scripture more fully. When Paul says that in his ministry is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more and more people, it may increase gratitude to the glory of God. And that circular nature will continue over and over. The reason the spreading of grace increases gratitude is because gratitude is the happy feeling directed toward a person who does us some undeserved favor, or we see it as an undeserved favor. Grace begins when one person is full and another is empty. No matter what it is, full of something and another is empty of something. One person is a have and the other is a have not of whatever it is. Grace comes into action as the emptiness of one is filled up by the fullness of the other. What we do not have is supplied by what he has or she has. When the grace of God or the spiritual law of one penetrates the human heart, it rebounds back to God as gratitude. 
Gratitude is grace reflected back to God in the happiness we feel toward our life. From the Holistic Wellness Center in talking about brain health. So now we get to talk about something, you know, brain, our, our physical brain health. They write, perhaps the most fascinating aspect of the brain compared to other organs in the body is how readily it changes and evolves based on how we treat it. For instance, research shows that even how we think and see the world, whether we complain frequently or express gratitude regularly, can be the difference between accelerated brain degeneration or enhanced brain function. Well, that should knock you over, huh? <laughs> So in continuing with this, uh, this there's a, a quote here. It says, instead of complaining that the rose bush is full of thorns, be happy the thorn bush has roses. <laughs> ah, <laughs> right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> or the motorcycle goes the other way. <laughs> so they say, how do you destroy the habit of complaining? One word, gratitude. It's easy to focus on all of the negative things we may be faced with in life, but the best way to cut the habit of complaining is to cultivate the habit of gratitude. The research on the positive benefits of gratitude on the brain and body are extremely encouraging. But like all good things in life, they take work on your part. <laughs> One of the most reliable paths to positivity is gratitude. You can develop a more positive outlook by thinking of or writing down things in your life for which you are grateful. We talk about journaling a lot here, and just so you know, I always have journal notebooks up here on the handout table, and there's pins in the back. So at any time that you want to practice journaling or write down anything, or you're thinking the, the, the gratefulness is just overflowing, you got to get it down, come get a notebook and start writing it down. Gratitude journals are are such a, a quick way to turn your attitude around, okay? Let's see where I was. A grateful attitude has been linked to less anxiety and depression, sounder sleep, kinder behavior, behavior and overall better health. One study showed participants who wrote down five things for which they were grateful only once a week were happier, more optimistic, and reported fewer physical problems and exercised more compared to the controlled group. Five things once a week, right? So Dr. Margaret Paul, I'm finding these things on the internet, and she wrote, have you ever known a happy person who wasn't grateful or a grateful person who wasn't happy? While we cannot always just choose to be happy, we can always choose to be grateful which results in happiness. So in a roundabout way, we are choosing happiness when we choose to be grateful. And there is always something to be grateful for. You can be grateful that you are alive and you have opportunities to learn and grow and share and love. You can be grateful for the sun, the rain, the snow, the beauty of nature, the green grass, the glory of trees, the color of flowers, the presence of animals, the food you eat. If you have a partner, children, a home, a car, a job, you could be grateful for them. You can choose to be grateful for all the big and little things in life, each and every moment. The more you choose to notice what is good and beautiful, the happier and more peaceful you will feel. On the other hand, there are always things to complain about if that is your choice. Instead of noticing the beauty of the flowers, you can complain about having to water them. Instead of being grateful for the opportunity to be alive, you can complain about how hard it is. Instead of being grateful for the sun, the rain, or the snow, you can complain about how hot it is, or wet, or gloomy, or how cold. 
Instead of being grateful for your food you eat, you can complain about how hard it is to cook it or expensive it is to buy. Instead of being grateful for your health, you can complain about your weight. Instead of being grateful for your partner or your children, you can certainly find endless complaints about them. <laughs> the more you complain, the more unhappy you will feel. It is not the person or the situation or the event or the past or anything else that is causing your unhappiness. It is your choice to complain about it instead of discovering what is wonderful about it and being grateful for it. That's a mouthful, isn't it? At any given moment, we get to choose which part of ourselves we want to express. Our ego wounded self or our heart and soul. If you decide to trust your mind over your heart and your soul, you will likely find yourself noticing what you don't like and complaining about it in order to attempt to control it. That's yes. what we do. Complaining is a form of control, and the left brain mind believes that if you complain enough, you can have control over getting what you want. Your soul self, the aspect of you that is connected with your higher source of love and truth, lives in the present and feels grateful for the opportunity to express love and appreciation for all that is. The really great thing is that given that we are beings of free will, we get to choose who we want to be each and every moment of our life. Lastly, I'd like to share some words from a website called babeskills.com. <laughs> These websites are funny, right? <laughs> you know, I just punch in these things that I want to know about and stuff comes up, so, right? So I'm not one to whine, this is what the website says, I'm not one to whine and complain to other people. I'm very aware of how my energy affects someone else and I try to, and I try to be respectful of that. This is not to say I never feel angry or resentful. Obviously, I'm human, and there are times when negativity can get the best of me. Anybody feel that? I just tend to keep it internal. Mm -hmm. Whenever, oh, this is a naughty word. Whenever shitty thoughts and feelings start to bubble up, see, these are those websites, not yeah. me. I try and stop complaining in its tracks with gratitude. That's what I put in there. Turning complaining into gratitude is what I Googled, I think. So whenever those thoughts start to come up, I try and stop complaining in its tracks with gratitude. Here's why the ego is strengthened by complaining. It feeds off of it and loves to complain about other people and situations. Every complaint is a little story the mind makes up that you completely believe in. When this happens, the ego has you in its grip. You don't have thoughts. The thoughts have you. have you. Today, I wanted to share a personal method which has been extremely useful in squashing negativity and assisting with living a happier, grateful, abundant, and positive life. Anyone interested? Yes, please. All right, let's hear So step one, becoming self-aware to even notice that you're complaining right? That's not so easy. You'd be surprised at just how many people have no idea the sheer volume of negativity that spews from their mouths on the daily. And that can be very true. The first thing we have to do is start self-observation and start noticing. And sometimes that happens, or I think it's easiest to happen when we pay attention to how we feel, right? Because she, she put that here, whenever she feels whenever shitty thoughts and feelings. So whenever I'm feeling really crappy, you can know that my thoughts are really not in alignment with the truth of who I am, okay? She says, start just by noticing each time you have a negative thought, feel resentful, or you start telling yourself a story about a person or a situation. And that's just step one, that's it. Just notice, 
okay? Because we can't change anything unless we realize that it's a problem for us. So just starting to notice, oh, without judgment, you know, you can't say, you can't be negative about it either because then you're back in the negativity. Just a great, you know, ah, how interesting that I have that negative thought about that or I'm complaining about that. How interesting. I just notice. Step two, counteract a complaint with a compliment or an expression of gratitude. Not sure how to spin a negative into a positive, she says. Start with, this is good because, okay? Like this motorcycle, this is good because he's going the other way and he's not gonna come down here with the noise, okay? She says, missing my Pilates class this morning is good because I will get an early start on a 12 hour workday. <laughs> right? okay. So changing that complaint into gratitude by using the words, this is good because, okay? Gotta think of something, but, uh, some of the good out of that. It's important to remain grateful even during life's challenges to raise your vibration and be more open to the lesson. Raising your vibration is the big deal here, okay? Getting into a better state of mind is the big deal here. If you choose to stay in a negative place, you're just inviting more negativity into your life, okay? Step three, don't confuse complaining with observations. For example, it's hot outside is an observation. It's hot outside and I hate living in this city is a complaint and there is a difference, she says. You're also allowed to have and notice negative experiences. It can't always be good vibes only. Just remember, you might not always be able to control what happens to you. However, you have a choice in how you react to any situation you're thrown into, okay? If negativity has become a habit, keep a nightly gratitude journal and start to turn the tide. It forces us to think about what we're grateful for in our lives, even if you write the same five things every night. Start, and you would be so surprised how writing down what you're grateful for opens you up. So remember, as we cast our bread upon the waters, that's how we started here, when we intentionally keep our thoughts upon spirit and use the action of our spoken gratitude, then we receive the graciousness of the universe reflected back to us as grateful people and gracious situations in our lives. If we have the eyes to see it that way, we offer this song. Ooh. your bread upon the living water stand in faith as you watch it drift away learn to trust that mighty cosmic ocean It will bring back your cherished dreams someday. There will be times as you wait upon the shoreline that your hopes will all crumble in the sand. You'll want to cling to all of your possessions. But this is when you must open up your hands and cast your bread upon the 
living waters Stand in faith as you watch it drift away Learn to trust that mighty God's make ocean and it will bring back your cherished dreams someday. There is a reason that you dream, that you reach for something more. That you have the power to see another is when memory is stored in the heart and not in the mind. Isn't that cool? God, you are every mountain. God, you are Every ocean, God, you are every canyon, every inch of earth and sky. God, you are every morning, God, you are every midnight, God, you are every moment, every second of my life. Everything I see, everything I do. Everything I do, everything I am is you. 
the ushers come forth, this is our time to consciously participate in the law of circulation. So if you'll take your gift upon your hands and just know with me that as I cast the symbol of abundance onto the waters, it returns to me multiplied and it is there to continue blessing and improving the world. And so it is. And, and our affirmation, my God is a God of plenty. So these words are in the handout, of course. together and so we have a list of affirmations there that we will read out loud together and we're just going to go all the way down so as soon as you're ready here we go my happiness is god's business therefore no one can interfere i banish the past and now live in this wonderful now where happy surprises come to me each day Every person is a golden link in the chain of my good. God utilizes every person and every situation to bring me my heart's desire. Oh, yeah. I am in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm in the right place 